Hello students. So I've just uh, finished the recording for August uh, 2022 MCQs. Um, there are 52 questions in all, about one and a half hours. So please do solve it and uh, I'll be sharing the PDF of the questions as well as the uh, analysis on the on my telegram channel. The link is in the description box. Uh, the upload got a bit delayed. The video got delayed because of my I was a bit unwell, right? So everybody in the house, that's the reason. Otherwise, will be it won't it won't take much time in the subsequent months of current affairs MCQs. So this was a short message I wanted to share. And do enjoy the video. That's it. Hello, students. Welcome to the first question. The Kessler syndrome is related to which of the following so the kessler syndrome is associated with space debris normally you know the term syndrome comes we think about genetic disorders but that is wrong now let us see what is kessler syndrome so kessler syndrome was given by donald a kessler so he was concerned he said that there are a lot of space launches taking place there are a lot of satellites that are there in the in the lower earth orbit so a lot of satellites are there nowadays private sector is also coming up so more and more launches are going to take place so he proposed that if tomorrow there is an accident that takes place there is a collision that takes place amongst the orbiting satellites so in that case one accident one collision may result into multiple collisions so there may be a domino effect and uh, there will be a lot of damage as a result of this you can see from the images also i think that makes it very clear so this is kessler syndrome okay uh, now you know uh, this question of space junk space debris etc this is important for mains also uh, gs3 so we can prepare for that also so you can keep this in mind Coming on to second question, with reference to the jute sector in India, uh, consider the following statements. Uh, the jute corporation of India limited has a mandate of mandate for the procurement of raw jute from any without any quantitative limit from the growers at minimum secure minimum support price. Let us look at this statement. There is definitely an agency known as Jude Corporation of India. This is obviously a PSU. And the government, obviously, why the government would form this? The government wants to promote the Jude sector in the country. Right. So they want to promote the Jude sector. And one way is that uh, the Jude farmers to promote, you know, Jude sector is under threat from synthetic materials. Jute is used for packaging, etc. So from farmers, Obviously, there is less demand. So, from farmers, the PS, this PSU, Jude sector, uh, Jude Corporation of India will buy Jude. The government wants it. That, that will provide livelihood to the farmers, the Jude farmers. Okay. So, this, the government would pay at the minimum support price naturally. That, that This part should be correct. Now this should be without any quantitative limit. So this is also correct. That is, there is no restriction how much of uh, jute is bought from the farmers. There is no limit. You produce more, you get more will be bought from you. So this statement is correct. I mean, I'm trying to use logic uh, to use this just in case this news has been missed. So this sounds correct and this is correct. Next statement. At present, 50% of the food grains and 20% of sugar are required to be mandatorily packed in jute bags. You must have gone to the mandis, sabji mandi, etc. And you would have seen jute bags in which food grains are stored. Right. And so, you know, I mean, it's very odd. You will, you, you won't have seen any other bag being used for food grains. So jute is the most common this thing. So fifty percent of the food grains, like logically, we can just strike it down. 
Now let us look at what is the correct this thing. Statement one is correct. It's coming to statement number two. Uh, from the year 2021 2022 there are these mandatory packaging norms which provide for 100% reservation of food grains it's for grains 100% reserve it means all these grains should be stored in the jute bags and for sugar it is 20% okay so answer is i think very clear answer is a1 only uh, coming to the jute Corporation of India, uh, you know, we should have more information on this also uh, from exam point of view. So this is a central public sector undertaking. I think Jude Corporation of India, this itself is a given case, a central agency. So set central public sector undertaking under the ownership of Ministry of Textile. This is again something that can be asked in uh, M MCQ's prelims. Coming to third question. Uh, this is with reference to the uniform civil code something that is always there uh, we always expect a mains based question also uh, gs2 okay so you should have prepared this now coming to uh, this one with reference to the uniform civil code consider the following statements it is defined in article 44 of the constitution yes it's mentioned there it's a uh, it's part of the directive principles of the state policy next uh, Goa and Arunachal Pradesh are the only states to have implemented it. Uh, well, uh, it's actually Goa is the only state. Arunachal Pradesh does not have the uniform civil code. Next. Uh, so we should uh, first of all, uh, one is correct, right? So and two is incorrect. So whichever has two will eliminate it. So we are left with one only. And let us see the third statement. The Law Commission of India uh, favored its adoption throughout India. Obviously, we know it is not from the options. And it is true, actually. You know, normally we think that Law Commission, even the view of the Supreme Court, High Court, etc., is that they are keep asking the government, why are you not implementing the Uniform Civil Code? And the reason why the government is being asked, one of the reasons is BJP party, their uh, for their mandate was also there for the implementation of UCC. Uh, however, the Law Commission of India is not in favor. They say that it is not required, more or less, there is conformity. So we don't really need at this point of time. So they were not in favor of this. This was in 2018. So the Law Commission was against the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code stating that it is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage. Okay, so obviously answer is uh, clear. Now, let me tell you from Maine's point of view, you should have this prepared. You should have a good definition of the Uniform Civil Code, why it is required, what are the concerns with implementation and there you can quote the Law Commission 2018 report. That will help you fetch better marks You and you can always cite the example of COVA. Consider the following statements regarding district legal services authorities. Another day actually I was actually standing right in front in the Chandigarh area. Okay, district legal services authority. Uh, they are headed by the district judges. Statement number one. See, it's district legal services authority. We're talking about the district level. Naturally, district judge is the senior most judge at the district level so this is correct this has to be correct one is correct so yeah the purpose is to regulate dls is to regulate uh, is to reduce the burden on the court so dlsas reduce the burden on courts this is fine right this is an alternate dispute resolution mechanism and any of this is when it, it is created one of the goal stated goal is to reduce burden on the court but how by regulating the lok adalats this statement is correct lok adalats are associated with nlsa act 
and DLSA is at the district level. So the purpose of the DLSA, one of the tasks is to regulate the low Adalats. And the low Adalats got statutory status. Please, these are important things. Statutory status with the NLSA Act. Okay, so Lok Adalats. Um, and uh, one one more thing, uh, Lok Adalats, when we talk about Lok Adalat, Lok Adalats, we should know about basic things about Lok Adalat. And very similar to Lok Adalat is Gram Nyalai. So you should know the difference between the two. I will come to this very quickly. So Lok Adalats, I will mark it over here. So two is correct, one and two are correct. DLSAs have been mandated to hold weekly meetings of under trial review committees. This is correct. Okay, so answer is one, two, and three. <coughs> okay, now let me tell you some brief points about the Lok Adalat. Uh, so, one thing, one important thing about the Lok Adalat that obviously it's associated with uh, DLSA and uh, they regulate it, so we have that. Uh, other thing is that it is associated with cases that are at pre-litigation level. That is, people have not gone to the court. So the idea is that rather than going to the court, if anybody has a dispute, civil or criminal, I'm mentioning this on purpose, civil or criminal, they can go, they can go to the Lok Adalat first. Uh, yeah, they can go to the uh, Lok Adalat. Only thing is that criminal case, you can go to the Lok Adalat if in that the possibility of compromise is there. Okay, if the possibility is there, then only you can go. Not all criminal cases you can go at the Lok Adalat. I think it's if it is a compoundable offense, then you can go to the Lok Adalat. If, if it is not a non-compoundable, then you cannot go. Okay. And Lok Adalat is at multiple hierarchies. Right. So this is an important point. Coming to Gram Nyale. Gram Nyale, as the name goes, Gram Gram is at the village level. So hierarchy is at the village level, panchayat level. It is inspired by the panchayat based justice system that is at the village level. Traditionally speaking, the justice was dispensed at the village level. So Gram Nyale is inspired by that, that village justice at the village level. However, it is not done dispensed by the uh, Sarpanches. Okay. And Gram Nyale is also a statutory body. It's created by the Gram Nyale Act. Okay. And again, here also civil and criminal cases. Only thing is here it is not really pre-litigation case. Uh, if and if in this case, if anybody has a dispute with the Gram Nyale judgment, then they can go to the appropriate higher authorities at the district court level. If it's a criminal case, you can go to the sessions court. So this is important between Nalok Adalat and Gram Nyale. Gram Nyale is not associated with the DLSA. Okay. <coughs> if you want to read more about the Lok Adalat, DLSA, the website of this is DLSA. You just Google this. Very good information is provided on their website. Coming to question number five. The Bhagodia festival seen in the news recently is associated with it's associated with the Malwa region, specifically Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. So Bhagodia or yeah, it's a festival. Bangodia. Right? So some images there I got from the Google. It's associated with the Malwa region, Indian states of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. Uh, it takes place on the onset of spring season and falls a few days before Holi. Next question, regional rural banks. So some statements are there with reference to the regional rural banks. And we have to identify the correct statement. They were established as per the recommendations of the Shiva Raman committee to cater to the rural credit needs. This statement is wrong. Shiva Raman committee is associated with the creation of NABAD. Right, NABAD. Now again, NABAD is a regulatory body uh, which regulates the regional rural banks. And the regional rural banks, the statement is correct. Only thing is, it was on the recommendation of the Nursimum Committee report. Right, so Nursimum Committee. 
a uh, second one the pratham gramin bank was the first bank to be established under the regional rural banks this is correct and uh, so two is correct uh, let me just mark one wrong right so two is correct so we left with three is has to be wrong okay uh, coming to this third one the equity of the regional rural bank is wholly owned wholly held by the union government conceptually speaking the statement is wrong think about it regional rural banks so it is at the village level uh, rural credit needs normally here local bodies state government they also have a very important stake and the government would want them to have a stake and other thing is that it cannot be wholly owned by the union government equity that 100% ownership of the central government that is not possible there are multiple banks so banks will also have their ownership so principally conceptually the statement is wrong right so the proportion is like central government owns 50% sponsor bank whichever bank name is there they own 35% and state government owns 15% Okay, this is about the Shivaraman committee. Uh, so they established associated with the establishment of. Uh, coming to the seventh question, with reference to financial inclusion index, consider the following statements. I mean, these indexes are very very important. Okay, it is published annually by the Reserve Bank of India. it is responsible responsive to ease of access uh availability and usage and quality of services um this sounds correct because financial inclusion that is bringing more people under the fold of financial services so for that you have to ensure accessibility they have to be services have to be available it it, it should be easy to use and quality should be there one more point is affordable but uh, affordable there is not mentioned in this index right so one is wrong so if i just eliminate let's see so two has to be correct given the options okay uh, next one it has been constru constructed without any base year normally indexes will have base year base year always helps with a reference point but this one really does not have a base year so d 2 3 is the answer so you just have to keep in mind that there is actually no base year okay so 2 and 3 is the answer right uh, this i'll you can always read i'll share it on the telegram also so that you can get it uh eighth st uh, statement blasphemy and okay so this is about the hate speech um yeah and the two important terms that we are discussing are blasphemy and hate hate speech now let me explain blasphemy and hate speech first uh hate speech i hope you understand hate speech is when somebody tries to incite violence um, somebody tries to provoke people that is hate speech and there are multiple laws multiple punishments mentioned crime and punishments mentioned under the indian penal code for hate speech and one of them is section 295 295 295a uh, under the indian penal code which is associated with hate speech associated with religion you know on the like saying something about against a particular religion religion with the idea of provoking people uh, create hatred or attacking somebody's place of worship something like that so that is under 295 the here explanation is given okay that is hate speech now blasphemy is obviously associated with religion obviously it's associated with religion when somebody says something that is offensive Uh, you know they against the religious norms or whatever so that is blasphemy it is not necessary that a statement is blasphemous and hate uh, hate speech at the same time for in instance i'll give you one example 
I'll give you one very simple example of Copernicus. I'll not get into controversy. Uh, Copernicus. So Copernicus, for instance, he said that, uh, obviously scientist, astronomer, he said that, uh, you know, normal view of religion was that uh, Earth, uh, Earth is stationary and the sun and other stars rotate around the Earth. That was the view according to the church that day. Copernicus says, no, it's not the other way around. The sun is stationary, the earth is rotating around it and all stars, I mean, earth is rotating basically. So that was again seen against the religion and that was blasphemous. He was executed for that. But that was not hate speech. He was trying to correct some wrong that was going on, some misconception that was there. He was trying to correct it, but that was against the religion and he was punished for that. But that is not hate speech. Probably somebody talks about a social reform, which is which happens to be critical of the uh, critical of the religion. So that may be blasphemy, but that is not hate speech. Hate speech is when you incite, when you try to provoke, and leads to violence. That is hate speech. So there is a difference between the two. <coughs> I hope this thing is clear. Okay. So, yeah, now coming to this, blasphemy and hate speech have separate provisions in the Indian Penal Code. No, there is no law on blasphemy. That's what I was trying to say. We have a law which is associated with religion and punishments are there, but that is not, we don't have any law, anything associated with blasphemy. There is a very, very important difference between blasphemy and hate speech. Other countries have Pakistan, you will find, uh, Saudi, you will find, but not in India. There is nothing to do with blasphemy and it's not possible also. It should not be there. It will be violative of article, uh, the fundamental rights. Okay, next question. Uh, destruction, damage or defiling of a place of worship is a cognizable offense. If one is wrong, so two and three are correct. If the state violates the right to religion of anyone, then he, she may have to, may move to the apex court. Yeah, so right to religion is a fundamental right. And uh, according to Article 32, right to constitutional remedies, you can approach the Supreme Court or the apex court. Okay, so Section 295 is a cognizable offense, which means that the police are authorized to arrest accused person without the need of a judicially sanctioned warrant. So this was about the cognizable offenses, uh, you know, cognizable offense, non-cognizable offense. So here is the difference. Coming to question number nine, which of the following international platforms are shared by India and Maldives? Uh, th this is very easy actually. So we'll see the map first. So India, Maldives, south of the eight degree channel. By the way, this question was asked. Okay. So India and Maldives, uh, they're all South Asian uh, nations and they are part of the SARC, this thing, so SARC summit, you will hear about this. Coming to question, uh, statement number two, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a, mainly a China-led initiative um, dealing with the Central Asian countries. Not all Central Asian countries are part of SCU. But Central Asian countries, Maldives is nowhere concerned with what is happening over here. The Maldives is obviously not a member. In fact, the members are matlab, outside of Central Asia. It's China, of course, Shanghai, Russia. And in the Astana summit, this was again asked in the prelims, Astana summit of 2017, uh, India was made a member on Russia's insistence. And since India was made, China said we want Pakistan also to be a member. So that's best South Asian countries are there, but uh, Maldives is not a member. Then the third statement is talking about the ASEAN. So third statement is about ASEAN, that is Associ Association of Southeast Asian Nations. As the name goes, it is Southeast Asian Nations and there are 10 Southeast Asian countries and mind you, the China is not part of this, right? So China is not part of it, India is not part of it, uh, USA is not part of it. So it's only the ASEAN countries. 10 countries are there in total. <coughs> Okay, 
question number 10 uh, consider the following statements regarding anti tank guided missiles um yeah so i think the name goes very clear anti tanks which to target the tanks and heavy um, heavily armored vehicles so this statement number one it is a guided missile primarily designed to hit and destroy heavily armored military vehicles a tank is heavily armored if you can destroy a tank you can destroy any other vehicle also so it is designed to attack such vehicles now guided missile yes it is the guided missile guided missile means you can give direction to the missile uh, in fact if i we go more into this thing it's actually based on the nag missile and nag is a cruise missile guided missile right anti-tank guided missiles and we have two variants of this one is helena this is the under the control of indian army and the other one is dhruv astra dhruv astra this is the indian air force version right indian army and air force and the same missiles just the name is here and this is based on the nag missile which is under the integrated guided missile program igmp and these missiles missiles under the igmp are by default important and i can tell you one more thing this question anti-tank guide missile this is something and helena also 2020 from 2020s these questions on current affairs are being asked and not yet in upsc okay Helena is an anti-tank guide missile sim system mounted on the advanced light helicopter. Okay, if we know the full form of helicopter, that's very uh, Helena. It will be very simple. Heli helicopter, N A N A G, right? So Heli helicopter. So both statements are correct. And this is the N A G missile. Dhruvastra, Dhruvastra is not mentioned over here and one more, one thing I wanted to explain again was this Helena missile can engage targets both in direct mode and as well as top attack mode. Let me explain this. Uh, direct hit mode. There is a helicopter. It helicopter in the air and it, there is a tank or heavily armored vehicle roaming so this helicopter fires a missile and hit can hit the target i'm intentionally made it like this it's a guided missile right so this is a direct hit your helicopter was in the air it hit the helicopter top attack mode is the direct hit i've explained top attack mode and therefore the time being let's forget the helicopter imagine the heli uh, the missile is based out of a hit out of a tripod this makes it easier for me to explain so somebody on the ground, right? The gun is there and uh, uh, tank is here only. So the missile goes into the air, high up in the air. It identifies the target and then goes downwards. So this is a top attack model. The missile from lower altitude, it goes high and then it goes again. It dives back into the target. important uh, question question number 11 similar question was asked in i think 2016 prelims consider the following statements regarding the iaea it is known as the world's atoms for peace and development yes it's correct and again international atomic energy for use of atomic energy for peaceful purposes nuclearization should not take place non-proliferation should be there all that so atoms for peace and development makes sense also. It is an autonomous and independently established organization. Now, if you look at the logo of IEA, you will feel it is associated with UN or something. Really, no. It was established independently, actually. It was not really part of the UN or it was not really a UN agency. So this is correct. However, it reports both to the UNGA as well as the UN Security Council. So all the three statements over here are correct. Now coming to question number 12. 
कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द रेयर अर्थ एलिमेंट फैक्चुअल या सो ओके बोथ लाइट लाइट रेयर अर्थ एलिमेंट्स just put in capital light rare earth elements and heavy rare earth elements are abundantly found in india actually india has the fifth largest uh, reserves so this is abundantly found light rare earth elements but heavy rare earth is very trace amounts are there so it is not uh, economically viable to extract it so this is heavy rare earth is not rare earth is not abundantly found <laughs> yeah next india is a part of the usa led mineral security partnership yes so what is this min mineral security partnership uh by the way first of all india is not part of this arrangement called the mineral security partnership for so let us see what is this mineral security uh, partnership so you know with this pandemic taking place covid 19 pandemic and uh, so this is one reason uh, there was a problem of supply of there was semiconductor shortage and semiconductors are made out of rare earth there are they are required rare earth are required for that semiconductor so there was a semiconductor shortage there was supply chain issues uh, back then so given that problem that had taken place um, the western nations um, europe america so they want to focus on outside of china they said there is too much dependence on china if there is a supply chain disruption again takes place uh, the, all the industries will get affected auto sales that affected electronic sales got affected production got affected so sales got affected okay so they said we have to look outside of china So as part of the China plus one strategy, that China okay we have all we have China manufactures for the world, but outside of it also we should look, and many are actually looking at India at this point of time. Okay, so China plus one, this thing. So Western nations and US etc. So they are looking at an alternative arrangement. So as a result of this, mineral security partnership has been conceptualized, and yes, India is not. okay i am saying that due to the covid 19 pandemic other reason is that there is heavy dependence on china tomorrow if there is any tension that takes place china may cut short the supply of rare earths or semiconductors to that country and it happened with japan so they have that silent island issue with them so china stopped supplying them semiconductors and they had to cut down their views on the dispute okay so yeah <coughs> rare earths elements are an essential part uh, re required for the manufacturing of batteries used in the electric uh, vehicles this is correct so three only is the answer so we done with 12 questions over here now coming to question number 13 with reference to london interbank offered rate popularly known as libor you must have seen it in the newspaper or on the on your economy notes somewhere you must have heard about it now here we have following statements with reference to uh, libor okay so let us look at the statements it is a benchmark interest rate i think this is understood from here it's a benchmark interest rate at which major global banks lend to one another in the international interbank market for short term loans so we have lot of things that we have to consider that is it for global uh, banks or is it for london only right then it uh, lend to one another in international interbank market i think interbank thing is fine it's clear and is it for short term or is it for long term long term so this number of things we have to consider Now let us look at statement number two and three. It is calculated using waterfall methodology. I have no idea what waterfall methodology is, but this statement is correct. 
and it has been subject to manipulation scandal and methodological critique always there will be critique there will be concerns about manipulation so these two statements are definitely correct now let us look at statement number one so LIBOR is an interest rate average so it's an interest rate of of, of course uh, from estimates submitted by leading banks in London, fine. Um, leading banks in London. Each bank estimates what it would be charged were it to be borrowed, borrow, borrow capital from other banks. It is the primary benchmark along with Euribor. So Euribor like London, so banks of Europe, Euribor. For short term interest rates around the world. So definitely when this expression comes world, it is a global, it is used by various banks. So it's global and it is short term interest rates. Short term means less than one year. So this is a chart of the low LIBOR over here. One year, three months, six months and call money. Okay, so all the statements are correct. Now this term has been there in the news, question number 14. Uh, that is a porcupine strategy. So porcupine strategy recently seen in the news is related to which of the following countries. So four options are there. A, it should be A, B, C and D. Okay. Uh, so you know porcupine. So this is a porcupine. If you have watched National Geographic or something, porcupine, this, uh, th this has a defense mechanism. This animal has a defense animal with the spikes come off. So dogs try to attack it, sometimes cheetahs, uh, leopards, lions try to attack, although this is a bit of an uh, animated kind of an image, this is not real, it's photoshopped. So sometimes when they try to attack this animal, you know, obviously it cannot fight against such a huge animal, but it releases, releases the spikes and the animals are hurt badly. I saw for dogs, they were brutally damaged, their mouths were so with a lot of spikes of this. So it's a small animal, small animals defense against a much larger animal, a much larger predator. So this is a defense strategy. So this is logical for Taiwan over here because Taiwan is being threatened by China. So Taiwan is looking at it at a porcupine strategy. Right, so porcupine strategy where it would it put some mines or what some structure so that when the military comes they are damaged. So Taiwan's war strategy that is the porcupine strategy. It is uh, an asymmetric porcupine defense. Asymmetric. There is lack of symmetry. China is a much bigger powerful country as compared to Taiwan. Taiwan has no chance actually. So it will rely on some defense structures or something which causes a lot of damage to their Chinese military if they attack. So it is embodied in a Taiwanese military plan called the overall defense concept. The island would bristle with mines and anti-ship, anti-air, anti-vehicle missiles. Right. So strategic amp Yeah. So this is a porcupine strategy. Next question. I feel this is important. Peninsula Rock Agama, recently seen in the news, is related to which of the following species? Obviously, I think I hope you understand what is. Peninsula Rock is fine. What is Agama actually? That is a big question mark. Is it a sparrow, a frog, lizard or butterfly? Okay. Uh, here you are. If you see the image, I think this is very, this will be very, very uh, clear, right? What are we talking about? So uh, a lizard with a shade of gray, black and orangish kind of a head. So Agama is a genus of small to moderate size lizard. I think this is very clear. This is a small sized, small, medium sized lizard. Long tailed chameleon, etc. They have long tail. Uh, Insectivite. Insectivorous, they eat insects. Old world lizards. Right. Old world lizards. So Agama, if I think if lizard is fine, if you just focus on this term expression, old world lizard, you'll be fine. You have seen the image, 
that's more than sufficient. It is found and is discovered in the Eastern Ghats. Okay. Sixteenth, uh, sixteenth question. Uh, a question of this type was asked in uh, on Chief Secretary was asked in one of the pre some three four years back. Uh, with reference to Chief Secretary of State, consider the following statements. The appointment of Chief Secretary is made in the name of President of India. Do you think it makes sense? Oh, it has to be the Governor. Right? The Governor appoints the officials at the state level. So it has to be the Governor. Okay. So all appointments etc. take place under the name of the Governor. Uh, and the Governor is aided uh, and the government, Governor acts on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers headed by the Chief Minister. Okay, uh, so one is wrong. Uh, he has powers to transfer any officer of any rank without consulting the chief minister. First of all, uh, again, uh, the power to transfer, the statement is flawed. The power to transfer is that of the governor and the governor acts in accordance with the aid and advice of the council of ministers. There may be a mechanism where the chief secretary advises but he really cannot transfer. And again, consultation of uh, the chief minister is required. So both statements are incorrect. <coughs> Question number 17. Consider the following statements regarding India-Asian relations. Fine. Uh, so we are on Delhi Dialogue. Delhi Dialogue is a mechanism hosted by India annually with ASEAN. Okay, I think if, if we talk about Delhi Dialogue, naturally it has to be hosted by India. Uh, it is associated with ASEAN, but is it annually that you should know? And besides the question, what you should know is what was the theme on which the Delhi Dialogue took place? So four or five, you know, four options would be given. Old themes of Delhi Dialogue uh, would be mentioned. You have to know the correct one. Very important. And this statement is, by the way, correct. It's uh, conducted annually. Okay. India is a part of ASEAN's ADMM Plus uh, Summit, which is an annual meeting of the Defence Ministers. It's ASEAN Defence Ministers ADMM. Yeah, uh, ADMM is to do with defense ministers. Uh, I forgot the M over here. Okay, so it's again an annual summit. So since 2017, the ADMM plus meets annually and plus basically indicates the dialogue partners. So Asian countries, their defense ministers, plus the uh, non-Asian countries like Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, Republic of Korea, Russia and United States. So I think all important stakeholders, if you look at it, if you, if, if you don't want to you know, mem uh, memorize these, you can think this way. Uh, the countries which are in proximity to the Asian region, those are there. Beside, I mean, Japan is there, but yes. But Japan, has a, Japan is seen as an important stakeholder vis-a-vis -vis China. Okay. So Asian plus uh, this thing. And uh, coming to the Delhi Dialogue, it is an annual track 1.5 forum. So it's mentioned and this is, I have taken this from the uh, PIB. Okay, it's an annual uh, track 1.5 forum. What does this mean? 1.5. Track 1 means government officials meeting. Government officials of various countries, Asian countries coming and meeting with us. And that is track one. Track two is when non-state actors, they engage. So track 1.5 is kind of both are engaging over here. So here we have uh, political leaders, policy makers, researchers, academicians, business leaders, media persons, etc. They converge for brainstorming on a range of issues pertaining 
to asian india relations so this is about asian india relations so obviously the countries are also asian countries plus india the theme of the recently i mean not recent uh, july august um, delhi dialogue 12 was held in the theme of building bridges in indo pacific very very important very important building bridges in indo pacific so uh, yeah so both statements are correct right so we done with this thing and uh, building bridges in indo pacific is the theme which of the following uh, issues are not taken up for redress under the centralized public grievance redress and monitoring system fine so matters which are sub judis so they are not taken naturally they will not be taken personal and family disputes are not taken rti matters are not taken anything that impacts upon territorial and this is not taken so i think all the three options would be two two and three should be there service delivery has to be uh covered service delivery has to be covered service obviously if there is any public uh, has a grievance against service delivery which is a part of governance so that has people should be have, have the right to appeal against it so two and three are not taken up again uh, this thing is important for your mains governance uh, component right what is the government doing for enhancing governance uh, what is the role played by the e governance e governance and good governance are, are you know the correlation between the two is e governance necessary i mean uh, e governance necessary for good governance lot of lot of things lot of things can be there citizen engagement question 19 which of the following are the key provisions of the energy conservation bill 2022 mandating the use of non fossil sources which do logically right mandating the use of non fossil sources so uh, cleaner energy we want to mandate that use establishment of carbon markets uh, if if somebody does better for example delhi metro because of that lot of fossil fuels are not being burned so they should be able to get rewards for that so they should be able to get carbon credits that they have saved so many tons of carbon dioxide and they should be able to sell it sell it and raise capital for further expansion and that could be for private sector also so that makes sense and energy conservation amendment bill sh should have this provision logically should have this provision bringing large residential buildings within the fold of energy conservation regime has to be there increasing the uh, members of the governing council of the bureau of energy efficiency which comes in the ministry of power okay so all the options are correct all the statements are correct the report outbound travel and tourism an opportunity untapped <coughs> was recently released by which of the following nangia anderson llp in association with fikai when no no it's pronounced f i c c i federation of indian commerce chambers of federation of industrial Com i don't know i forgot the this thing okay so you i you understand right it's a lobby for uh, industrial sector okay Uh, besides this you should know uh, reports i keep mentioning this you should know reports uh, the world economic forum un wt are not very important you can read about this additionally wef reports you have already seen lot of questions are asked question number 21 uh, to to do with some schemes of the government bachat lamp yojana is a public private uh, partnership program fine uh, eco nevas samita is an energy conservation building code samita code same thing okay is an energy conservation building code for the residential sector only now let us break this up 
and let's see if we what if we didn't remember uh, read about it how do we do it so bachat lamp yojana first one bachat save money economy less cost lamp light bulbs right so light bulbs where well, private sector will make it government will not make it and the government will like to give it to the public at a affordable rate especially people from the poorer strata of the society so it makes sense but it has to be a public private partnership government will not make lamps right so private sector make can make affordable lamps and that can be given so next eco nivas samita samita is code of course nivas is where do people stay residential places so it has to be for the residential sector only eco nivas samita is for residential sectors nivas house residence so this is correct uh, right as uh, so i heard some uh, elimination techniques where only thing is there so you can cross it 90% chance that you will be wrong so, but i don't agree with that here only is correct so both statements are correct yeah so you see this energy conservation building code for residential buildings and ecbc r right for commercial maybe it would be c bachat lamp yojana is a public private partnership composed of b distribution companies and private investors what will they do energy efficient compact fluorescent lamps i don't know why fluorescent lamps i mean full fluorescent lamp is e waste more of e led is may have been better okay fluorescent lamps at the same cost that is rupees 15 as of incandescent lamps right i mean yeah so fluorescent lamps are given could have been led led could have been promoted much more okay question number 22 agm 88 harm missile always seen in the news <laughs> always seen in the news it was there in i mean yesterday day before yesterday you named agm 88 harm so what is this air to surface air to air air to surface uh it's a missile given by usa so given um, given by usa to ukraine and during this uh, russia war so idea is that this missile you can see this is the aircraft so from the air it will be fired so air it will be fired and it can it seeks radiation you know radars are there Uh, so it hits the enemy radar so the enemy is blinded and uh, the army get take benefit out of this so agm 88 harm missile and uh, us uh, the russian military is has been able to destroy the missiles so that's why this thing is there in the news 2022 russian invasion of ukraine so it's no longer a game changer for ukraine it can detect attack and destroy a radar antenna or transmitter it seeks radiation it targets radiation 23 consider the following statements regarding the convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women fine uh it's an international treaty adopted by the unga yes it, yeah it's it's anyways given in the name itself Uh, global gender gap index was initiated by the convention no india is a signatory to the convention yes 1 and 3 only fine so yeah so the idea is that the world countries come together the governments come together the states and the see as to what issues are concerning the women what discriminations the women are facing and that is rectified this we did previously also global gender gap issued by the world economic forum with reference to agriculture infrastructure fund consider the following statements it is a pan india central sector scheme yes launched in the year 2020 i hope you understand what is a central sector scheme there is a central sponsored scheme and this is a central sector scheme central sector scheme means the government is giving 100% of the expenditure central a central sponsored scheme means center is sponsoring it but state also has to contribute its money 
So this is a central sector scheme, even though agriculture, but it is a central sector scheme. Why do I say agriculture? Because agriculture is a state subject. Okay, launched in the year 2020, correct. It provides a medium to long term debt financing facility for investment in viable projects. Yes, correct. You know what? Uh, funding has to be medium and long term. It cannot be short term, especially if we are talking about infrastructure. So this is correct. So one and two are correct. Now let us look at third statement. All loans under the financing facility will have an interest subvention of 10% per annum to a limit of rupees 2 crores. This is wrong. Uh, why I'll say this? Uh, the statement is illogical. What is the interest rate on a loan? 10%, 15%, something like this. And long term loans are normally at a lower rate. So 15 is out of it. I mean, not there possible. Now you say if there is a 10% loan, interest subvention would mean that that much would be minus. So if you give interest subvention of 10%, how is this possible, right? It's 0%. So normally you will see interest subvention up to 4%, 3%. The government gives subsidy of up to 3-4%. So that means if loan rate is 10%, so minus 4%, you get 6%. So you will never hear 10% per annum. Never, never you will hear this. So this is wrong. So if we do this also, uh, we still have to have this one and two only. If you can somehow know that 2 is correct, so 1 is all automatically part of it. So 1 and 2. Uh, medium to long term debt financing extended to 13 years. Intended beneficiaries, primary agricultural credit societies, marketing cooperatives, farmer producer organizations, all of them. Interest subvention is given at 3%. So I told you up to 4% you can see. Lot of things on Antarctica. Okay. With reference to Antarctica, consider the following statements. It's about the geography. Okay. It is covered by the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and Atlantic Ocean. Uh, yeah. So let us look at the map of uh, Antarctic. Anta I think you can make out mentally also, you can think that. Uh, India, Africa, so uh, Indian Ocean is here, uh, Asian countries over here, so they, then we have Pacific and then Atlantic. So these are the main oceans over here, so naturally uh, Antarctica is in contact with all of them. Um, one way of all also could be seen is that, uh, you know, the Southern Ocean, sometimes they refer to as the Southern Ocean, if you believe that way, then you're, you know, there then there may be a conflict. Anyways, the answer that was given was that Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. But I found this question to be a bit conflicting. Uh, Ross Ice Shelf is situated in the western part of Antarctica. Okay. Uh, Ross Ice Shelf is the biggest ice shelf that is there in Antarctic, Antarctica. In fact, Ross Ice Shelf is something that I have, even when we were attempting, this thing was there. In, we had to um, prepare for this thing, Ross Ice Shelf. So it's the biggest ice, ice shelf that is there in Antarctica and this is in the southern part. Okay, so it's in the southern part of this thing. So one is correct. If one sees one is correct, then one is correct. If one sees it at southern ocean, so it is surrounded by southern ocean, then it may not be correct. But if you look at this map, this is fine because there are two maps actually. One is with this. One is with Southern Ocean marked like this. 26. Recently, the global employment trends for the youth 2022 report was released by which organization? Uh, can we do it logically? Maybe yes. Global employment trends, employment as a function of labor, India, international labor organization. 
think it's a, not very sure specialized agency of the un is associated with the united nations please uh, do one thing go to this un uh, just type specialized agency of united nations on google and see which of the following are specialized the agent specialized agencies of un because there are some agencies which are not specialized agencies so that you should keep in mind but yes this is ilo as far as the question goes <coughs> right uh so and it is headquartered in geneva uh these are the other reports that the ilo re releases uh why are we talking about it one is it was released and uh from main's point of view actually the content is important uh it says that it's raising questions about the female labor force participation here it says female female labor market participation so it says Indian young women experienced larger relative employment losses than young men in 2021-2022, indicating some sort of a discrimination. Uh, men are more employed as compared to female. Now, uh, you know how we can look at it from men's perspective, like the government focusing so much on female uh, participation. Uh, there are so many benefits of uh, uh, women participation. Then why, why do we see women dropping out from the workforce? What are the barriers? So that's just one theme. Other theme could be uh, why are women not at the higher levels in uh, the corporate sector? What are the issues that the women faces? That's, that is another theme that can be worked upon from Maine's perspective. Then um, if we dig more into it, why are they not there in the STEM fields? Science, uh, technology, engineering, mathematics. <sighs> very important uh, gs1 and gs3 if you look at it from the point of view of society gs1 economy gs3 uh, 27 <laughs> consider the following statements regarding monsoon drone uh, monsoon drone let us let me show you the map uh, first let me show this is from the website mossum.imd.gov.in but better we can see this uh yeah monsoon tro uh this is basically tro means low pressure right so look at this this is the wave uh, this thing just to explain actually so this is crest is the high point uh, tro is the low point so tro is indicating low pressure and um, so when there is a low pressure when the, there is low pressure the air tends to come in that area so for when moves from high pressure to low pressure and where there is low pressure there is obviously a possibility of rains right so weather phenomena gets affected so monsoon tro will influence monsoon so monsoon tro is a line that rides from pakistan this is the normal uh, location of tro sorry this is the location of tro basically uh, rides from this thing pakistan till the khasi jayantia this region over here this is what is mentioned in this text when it moves southwards when it goes southwards as you can see over here during the monsoonal period uh, so this is the monsoon tro so when it goes southwards so the rains take place across all the country all over india I hope you understand. If it is here, if it is at the northern point, this dot 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 position, this place, then obviously there is a break in the monsoon. Break, I hope you understand, right? Break. When it goes southwards, there is rain all over the India. This is the monsoon. So this is the simplest diagram that I could find. Yeah. So it is a low pressure area that extends from heat low uh, over Pakistan to the head of Bay of Bengal. Low pressure area is fine, Tro, low pressure, uh, extends from heat low, you know what that means, heat low over, so maybe because of heat low pressure is created over Pakistan to the head of Bay of Bengal. We can take this as correct. This is the exact statement that is taken from this point. When it is located to the south of its normal position, 
there is active rainfall over peninsular Indian region. What logic does it make? This is obviously wrong. Right, see if, if it is at this location, where is the peninsula, right? Somewhere here. So it affects the northern plains also. So this is this is not right. The statement is wrong. <coughs> Twenty-eight. Consider the following statements. Um, yeah. So some to do with the IR actually. Uh, Nagarno Karbhak region is surrounded by. So this is about Nagarno Karbhak. Okay. So it is surrounded by Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. Okay. Uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan are in conflict over Nagarno Karbhak region. Both are claiming it. So there is a war that is going on. Now let us look at the map over here. So uh, Ar Armenia and Azerbaijan go to war, all that you need to know about the issue, you don't really have to. Uh, this is the nagarno Karbakh region which is marked in this reddish color over here. Right, so you get it. This is now nowhere close to the sea, right? Uh, Caspian Sea is a bit far away. And this is the, this is Iran over here. So Nagarno Karbakh region is surrounded by Armenia, Azerbaijan, and not Iran because there is something over here which is not uh, Iran, right? Iran is south of it. So this statement is wrong because of Iran. Armenia shares border with the Caspian Sea. It's uh, Azerbaijan. Please have a look at the atlas also look at it ni nicely uh, so that will help you but yes you've done the question but still have a look at the atlas once again so both statements are incorrect question number 29 uh, with reference to genetic engineering appraisal committee consider the following statements fine it is an apex body, apex body uh, established under the Ministry of Science and Technology for research and industrial production related to biotechnology. You know, uh, when we started preparing, uh, BT cotton thing had just started. GEAC was there, General Engineering Appraisal Committee. And that time our teachers told us that it is uh, actually not teachers but that's something that we had to keep in mind that this is not under ministry of science and technology it is actually under ministry of environment this is something that we were always conscious about that is coming under the ministry of environment and forest and uh, climate change right this one ministry only okay so ministry of science and technology is wrong now GEAC, Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, naturally Genetic Engineering, it has to appraise, it, uh, appraise, is it right, bad, give an assessment on it and then should it be brought into implementation or not, should it be introduced in the market or not, that is the work of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. For example, the scientists develop BT cotton, so it has to go to GEAC and then they give the approval. Fine. So we have BT cotton, BT brinjal, then we have uh, some DMH mustard. So that is there. Okay. So BT cotton, BT brinjal are the only crops permitted for cultivation in India by the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. BT brinjal permission is not given. Or it is only BT cotton confirmed. Although uh, BT brinjal is also grown, but the permission is not given right so only for commercial this thing only for bt cotton has been given mm, so both statements are uh, incorrect so d is the answer this is from the pib you can make out okay so bt cotton is the only genetically modified crop 2020 15 september right uh, so this is uh, there uh, this was the entire page in which each this thing was explained um I have just taken some element of this thing. This is about BT 
the indigenous transgenic varieties of brinjal so bt brinjal namely janak and bss 793 containing bt cry so bt brinjal basically so uh, why i have put this is janak see this name you know the easily can be asked so one of the variants of the bt brinjal so permission is not given it's only bt cotton with reference to steve phenomena consider the following statements uh let us look at uh, steve first of all so steve is strong thermal emission velocity enhancement it's basically uh, there is a sighting that has taken place very very rare sighting i think after 10 years it has taken place where you see this lights in the sky uh, however this is not aurora right it's, uh, this is seen in the northern part as well as the southern part in the polar regions uh, but it is not the same uh, anyways this takes place because of the solar uh, solar winds so so uh, solar storms so collision with our planets outer shield and we get these amazing colors amazing lights okay now the in in key distinction between the aurora auroras and the steve is that this is seen in the closer to the equator region i did, did more of this uh, research actually uh, uh, it's like the auroras are seen more in the closer to the poles right so polar region however this is seen closer to the equator but that doesn't mean on the equator uh, this actually the sightings have been in the california so california is is a tropical area um then it a sighting has been in united kingdoms canada right so closer to equator means you know we don't literally take it that it is very close to the equator but it's just at uh, south of the polar region and it is driven by the me mechanism of the auroras so steve is different from the usual aurora but it is made of light and it is driven by the auroral system so it's very very similar so this phenomena now come to the statements this phenomena occurs mostly near to the polar region in the northern hemisphere uh, mostly near to the polar region is wrong because it's seen it can be seen slightly south so this is wrong and again yeah this i'm not very very sure i didn't uh, i did not a bit of research i didn't really find southern hemisphere any site over site over there mostly in the northern hemisphere okay steve phenomena is made of light and it is driven by the auroral system this is correct so b is the answer to this now coming to the 31st question Consider the following statements regarding the West Nile virus. Okay, so three statements are given. Uh, birds are the main host of the virus. Uh, it can sp spread from person to person through casual contact. Mm, not correct, actually. This is uh, not really correct. There is no vaccine or medicine for this uh, virus. This is true. Okay, so let us see what is this West Nile virus. So West Nile virus is a vector borne disease. Vector borne means it is mainly transmitted through the bite of a mosquito, dengue, chikungunya, malaria. So it is through the bite of the mosquito. Uh, now, when I was just saying this, I realized um, which mosquito that is important. I have not mentioned. So please do that research. Okay. So it is through the it's a vector borne disease. Uh, same same uh, uh, similar uh, symptoms are seen okay and this is associated with west nile so this is associated with africa okay um, so yeah uh, so this is there and birds are the main host of this virus so when what happens when the bird is bitten by the mosquito right so when the mosquito bites the bird they suck the blood out of it so they get 
infected the mosquito gets infected and from the, there the infection comes to the human beings it can also happen that the bird is infected and it bites the mosquito uh, mosquito is infected and it bites the bird and bird gets the infection anyways so the birds are the natural host of this disease from there it goes to the mosquito and mosquito then spreads it vector borne disease this is important to keep in mind and this virus west nile virus is rarely transmitted from person to one human to another right rarely it transmits in fact there was another website in which it said there is no evidence no evidence rarely and then no evidence of human to human transmission or person to person distinct okay so why i am saying this first of all let us see this birds are the main host this is correct uh, three is correct so we are we don't have one and three second one it can spread from person to person through casual contact just because you know we do not have an option the most appropriate option would have been one and three uh, but since we do not have it the answer would be one two and three and why uh, two should not be the this thing because it is rarely transmitted from one human to another so by direct contact obviously it doesn't make sense and then another report was you know just below this link it was no evidence of a transmission from person to person Uh, question number 32 uh, found this tricky actually with reference to mandakini river consider the following statements because there are two mandakini rivers uh, okay uh, so this was there in the news uh, it uh, uh, it originates from the hills of kilora in district satna of madhya pradesh this is fine it is a tributary of the yamuna river it is the lifeline of chitrakoot and the surrounding area actually the uh, issue was with reference to this the, that this place is getting affected because of the mandakini river pollution etc so that has to be rectified okay so the answer is one and three now some more on this thing mandakini river this, these are the same this thing okay um, yeah the, uh, this is the same this thing uh, now moving on to the other manda more on the mandakini river so there is one mandakini river associated with the madhya pradesh region there is another mandakini river which actually i am more familiar with that is and most of you would have studied in your geography also indian geography this is a tributary in uttarakhand this is a different river right so this is a tributary in uh, sorry this is in uttarakhand and this is associated with the several tributaries of river ganga in fact mandakini river merges with alaknanda river in the indian state of uttarakhand the river runs approximately 81 kilometers between rudraprayag and sonprayag and emerges from the chora bari glacier these are please these are important things even question on mandakini river of uttarakhand can be asked more likely it will be it may be asked and um, more on this thing mandakini in hinduism obviously these are sacred rivers uh, the uh, mandakini signifies the river of air or heaven and uh, as coined within the vayu purana it's not come clearly vayu purana this name uh, correlates to the mandakini's high elevation and its course through significant spiritual location fine so river of the air or heaven coined within the vayu purana Yeah, uh, if you just want to go back, yeah, thirty-two is done. Thirty-three, megalodon, recently seen in the news, is related to. It's related to shark. Uh, so this is uh, the this is not a shark. This is a megalodon, and this is the great white shark. White shark, which it, itself is very big. So this is mega. It's very big. and megalodon literally means big tooth so probably the form the fossil of big teeth okay so you can see the size comparison so this can be up to 60 feet long and the great white shark that we see which we feel is very big is nothing as compared to this shark uh, this is obviously extinct question number 34 uh, this is about web 3.0 which i feel is important for mains also gs3 science and tech 
Uh, it combines first way of statement. It combines older generation web tools with cutting edge technologies such as AI and blockchain. Web 3.0 must be the latest thing. Latest things are AI, blockchain. Right? Uh, blockchain means decentralized storage. So AI and blockchain. Uh, second, it establishes. <coughs> It establishes a new version of internet protocol incorporating token based economics, transparency and decentralization, blockchain decentralization. Uh, earlier web was based on centralization. Everything was stored on a single data and a single place. So now decentralized can be stored in through blockchains. There will be more transparency earlier. Transparency was not there like that. Web 2.2 now web 3.0. Now I have a comparison over here, uh, very briefly, centralized, uh, decentralized, decentralized provides for, I think you can already read this, fiat currency, cryptocurrency, cookies, NFTs, NFTs, I have a question on that, then that time I will explain AI, blockchain and metaverse worlds. So social network is web 2.0, Facebook, Orkut, which all other, uh, Instagram, these are all where data is stored on a, you know, you see those things. And metaverse is where you are actually, you feel that you are part of that thing, you're within it and you're interacting with it. So there is a difference between the two. This is based on virtual and augmented reality, while this is obviously web interface. <coughs> NFTs, I will explain. Uh, question number 35, with reference to snail fish. Very simple. A uh, snail fish uh, releases biofluorescence that's responsible for that light. So a uh, snail fish re releases biofluorescence which allows it to glow in the water current. And snail fish are the only polar fish, absolutely correct. They are the only polar fish reported to have biofluorescence. So this is main thing is polar keywords, polar and biofluorescence. Uh, this you can see the biofluorescence you can see the lumis uh, the lighting effect that is coming glowing fish that produces antifreeze discovered in the arctic by <laughs> Bi bioluminescent yeah non-fungible token with reference to the nft a non-fungible token consider the following statements um I want to explain this before I come to the statements, right? it makes it will be easier. Um, so again, obviously this is important for your, you know, um, JS3 also you can prepare for means. So if, if we have non fungible token, naturally we will also have fungible token. So if we can understand fungible token, automatically non fungible token will be easy to understand. A very good example of fungible token is money. Mm, I'll use this only, that will be easier, otherwise you'll keep reading the text only. So best example is money. Money is a fungible token. Um, one example is, let's say I have a 500 rupee note. So I'm explaining the concept of fungibility, 500 rupee note. If I have 500 rupee note, Another person has 500 rupee note. So it's basically the same thing. That note value has the same thing. A non fungible token, uh, good example would be something unique. For, for example, digital art, digital art, music. Somebody has made a song. Uh, unique things, uh, music, painting, non fungible token examples. I'm just money and these are the things. So money can be easily exchanged. If somebody has 500 rupee note, then also it has the same value. So they are fungible. They can be divided into different parts. They will still carry the same value. They are not unique in any ways. I may have a 500 rupee, you may have a 500 rupee note, somebody else may have a 500 rupee note. Maybe your notes would look different, but the value will remain the same. And I will not have a problem accepting from you or you have a problem in accepting from me. That is fungible token. Uh, uh, crypto uh, block uh, cryptocurrency again fungible token. Okay. Now coming to non-fungible tokens. 
so and on internet obviously you can trade with money and all then we have the non fungible token all those digital uh, art is emerging with the more and more of social media at all okay so digital art music painting or what about our class if i if we make a course some day okay so these are the, you know these are unique somebody has made a song other person has made a song doesn't make the same thing it, it is not the same thing one has has different uh, attributes other has a different attribute even though they both us same song songs of let's say 3 minutes doesn't make them they're unique like when somebody has made a painting other person has made a painting even on the same person they will still be different so there is a unique attribute to it they are non divisible they cannot be divided right so that is the difference <coughs> i hope this concept is clear <coughs> in economics the fungibility is a property of good or commodity whose individual units are essentially interchangeable fungible tokens can be exchanged or replaced for example 100 dollar note can easily be exchanged with 25 dollar bills okay and this is the non fungible tokens so these are unique cryptographic tokens they can represent digital or real world items like artwork right uh, nfts can represent individuals identity property rights whatever collectors and investors initially sought nfts are the public became more aware of them but the popularity has since waned i hope you get the logic what is an nft what is a fungible token rest you can uh, it's, it's always good to define it so you can easily get the definition from the net i want to explain the concept <clears throat> now let us look at the statements these are assets which are interchangeable and can be exchanged with another asset with the similar kind fine i have a song i have made a song and somebody else has made a song can i exchange that no so this is wrong they are divisible assets no my song i cannot sell a song for 1 minute 2 minutes 3 minutes if somebody has made a song of 3 minutes and i have made a song of 3 minutes so 1 1 minutes i we cannot change that it is not divisible it is a unique element money can be done so both are incorrect over here <clears throat> 37 uh, with reference to atlantic bluefin tuna consider the following statements um let us look at the image and that will make it very simple this is the tuna fish this is the atlantic bluefin you can see a shade of blue over here Okay, so they are very huge. They are gigantic, about fifteen hundred pounds. You can convert that into kilograms. Okay, so they are fifteen hundred, and they are endangered. So they are the largest tunas. Yes, seeing the image, we can guess that, infer that. Uh, the IUCN red list of threatened species classified it as vulnerable. No, they are endangered. So one is the answer, right? Two is incorrect. Thirty-eight. Uh, consider the following statements regarding the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification, Watchkeeping for Seafarers. So who are seafarers? Sailors, and sailors are on ships. So it concerns the sailors, sailors, people, and uh, ships. So training of the sailors, certification, and watchkeeping. right so all that regulation for the sailors seafarers okay now this makes makes it easy it was adopted by the conference at the international maritime organization in london uh, imo is responsible international maritime organization and that's the name goes it is responsible for the maritime domain and also the regulation of the seafarers so it's correct and imo is based out of london In fact, you know there is a video of mine on Unclos in that I mentioned about all this. Next, the convention prescribes minimum standards. Uh, obviously, obviously they will do minimum standards relating to training, certification, watchkeeping. Same point, same things are mentioned actually, literally. Uh, India has to be a signatory of the convention. So one, two, and three are correct. This is about the IMO. headquarters in london uh, but it was imo was established following agreement at un held in geneva so headquarters in london uk 
175 member states are there. And this is a specialized agency of the United Nations responsible for regulating shipping. Uh, 39. Uh, uh, consider the following statements regarding India's uh, recently launched hydrogen fuel bus. Question on the fuel cells. Hydrogen fuel cell has been asked in the pre, I think, 2015. So questions are asked actually on uh, this thing. Let's look at this. It is made up of novel downstream process technology. Uh, fine. A a answer is yes. Uh, now I, I couldn't really find what is this downstream process technology, but what I understand is water from water H2O make H2 plus O2 by you balance that equation to H2 right so yeah so so from water you make uh, this thing so downstream is uh, going down down downwards from H2 O2 if you make water that will be upstream okay so no novel downstream process technology uh, one more example I can give you. Somebody goes from textile. Um, Bani actually Reliance. So they started with the textiles and then they went to uh, making of the fabric, fabric. Then they went into making of the threads, cloth, threads. So that is downstream. Uh, downstream. And from threads, I think uh, you can talk about farming. So that is downstream. Yeah. Uh, it is. This is rubbish. It is a Russian technology imported through India Russia joint technology, blah, blah, blah. It is uh, actually a joint cooperation between the KPIT IT company, Midcap IT company, and CSIR in Pune. So you can see this uh, zero emission fuel cell bus. It's actually taken from here, August 21, 2022. <coughs> its refueling time is more compared to the battery operated electric vehicle. Absolute nonsense. So, answer is one only and why would i say absolute nonsense look at uh, this thing uh, that is electric vehicle if you charge the electric vehicle it takes a number of time fuel cells are actually easier and they, uh, they, they are batteries basically so they, they can be easily you just have to change the battery so therefore this is wrong it's refueling time is more so that is a disadvantage over here otherwise you, you can also read the debates elon musk tesla and, uh, and why japanese are looking at fuel cell technology so those themes if you search there also you can find it india is also considering the fuel cell uh, given the benefits of uh, we don't have cycling and recycling infrastructure i mean charging infrastructure and all those things okay question number 40 Recently, Mithila Mak Makhane, if I we just call it Makhane, I think that's simple. Mithila Makhane has been awarded GA tag by the union government from which state? I mean, this is very simple. This is a very give giveaway thing. Mithila, Mathili, Bihar. Bihar and the Nepal border, actually. So this is Makhane. You can see this. So, Mithila region of Bihar and Nepal. Uh, 41. Uh, the headquarters agreement was recently seen in the news is related to which of the following uh, this is uh, giving recognition to the coalition of for tdri coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure as an independent international organization so let's read more about this thing it's actually headquartered in delhi is it? Yeah, it's headquartered in New Delhi. So it will be with this headquarters agreement signed between uh, where is it? Uh, the coalition of CDRI and the government of India signed a headquarters agreement. Yeah, CDRI and the government of India. So with this agreement, it will enable the status of it will the building will get a status of an independent and international legal entity. Who will get the headquarters of the CDRI? What is the benefit? It will allow the institution to pursue functions internationally with all rights and immunities provided as per the UN Privileges and Immunities Act. Okay, more on this thing CDRI. So, 
it was actually in the 2019 un climate action summit uh, with the leadership of prime minister modi uh, cdri was conceptualized 2016 he gave the idea 2019 it came into being headquartered in new delhi you can understand india played a pivotal role over here so it's an international coalition of countries un multilateral development banks private sector academic institutions that aim to promote disaster resilient infrastructure with the objective of research knowledge sharing risk management financing for all that obviously disaster resilient infrastructure as the name itself suggests okay founded at uh, new york <coughs> Question number 42. With reference to the Disha scheme, consider the following statements. Uh, all, all the statements over here are uh, correct. Uh, the, so Disha is under the Ministry of Law and Justice and under this there is Department of Justice. Right. So they have visualized, conceptualized Disha which is designing innovative solutions for holistic access to justice. If you know the full form of Disha, I think this is simple right then the thing is very very simple access to justice and for this there are three components a time period is mentioned 2021 to 2026 three components tele law reaching the unreached nyay bandhu program that is free legal assistance bandhu means friend nyay means justice so somebody that facilitates justice so free legal assistance and counseling uh, counsel to the marginalized sections and legal awareness to if you want uh, people to, especially from the backward sections, seeking legal help for that, uh, first of all, awareness should be there. Right? So, Delhi Law, Nyay Bantu Program and uh, Legal Awareness Program. Now, look at those three statements. Uh, scheme by DOJ, implemented period. This is the one that is maybe tricky. Here again, you should know this. <laughs> It is uh, objective is to implement pan India legal literacy and legal awareness program. Uh, now, one thing that I feel this state becomes easy actually because I, uh, anybody who sees it will know that it is has to do with Disha. There is another thing uh, of the government known as Diksha. Disha, Diksha sounds similar, right? Uh, Diksha is an e learning platform created by the government. Now, what if some statements of Diksha were added to this, then, and if you don't know Diksha, then you would get stuck over here. So, you read about Diksha, I told you already, e-learning platform for the government to improve accessibility of education. 43, uh, with reference to lumpy skin disease, which of the following is our correct? Uh, it's a zoonautical viral illness. Lumpy, and uh, it was there in the news quite a lot. Prolonged morbidity in cattle and buffaloes. Morbidity means feeling of being sick. Morbidity in cattle and uh, buffaloes. It is confined to Africa only. Now, it was there in our news. That means it was there in India also, right? So, lumpy skin disease, foot and mouth dis uh, disease, FMD, feet and mouth. Same thing. Okay, so it's confined to Africa only. This is again uh, wrong. In fact, uh, one of my knowns, one of my knowns relative had a lumpy skin disease. Uh, somebody got it from the rural uh, background. Okay, so it, it uh, can be into the human beings also. So 43, uh, this both the statements are wrong, right? It's a virus. So most of the things that were there is actually associated with virus in the recent times. It's caused, uh, it's an infectious disease in cattle caused by a virus of the family pox vir vir viridae or nethling virus. Singapore Convention, yeah, this is uh, Singapore Convention recently seen in the news is related to uh, Singapore is one of the hubs for international arbitration, international settlement. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, it's associated, Singapore Convention is associated with the Uniform Framework for International Settlement Agreements resulting from mediation. 
mediation arbitration very similar mean, they mean more or less the very they are very similar actually in india arbitration and mediation both mean the same thing there's slight difference between the two other ways uh, rest i think uh, what you can do is uh, you can read about these three and uh, the international conventions associated with a b and c you can look at it i don't want to i know them but uh, not 100% sure right now okay so 44 is done uh, india is a member of the convention 45 consider the following statements regarding one nation one ration card it empowers uh, i think this is uh, well uh, i'm mean, very familiar you should be okay uh, so one nation one ration card was to ensure that ration is provided to the migrant workers so migrant workers don't get the benefit so for that one nation one ration card was okay when the issue of migrant workers again was there with the covid thing that took place okay so naturally uh, it empowers all nfsa migrant beneficiaries to access food grains from any fair price shop if you have the one this ration card um next national database of unorganized workers and e shram portal comes under the umbrella scheme o n o r c okay uh, you see national database of unorganized workers is ministry of labor e shram portal is again ministry of labor and uh, implementation of nfsa is the responsibility of ministry of consumers right so different ministries so it cannot be that these schemes comes and come under the umbrella scheme of on orc so only one is correct otherwise th this these you can actually quote in your answer writing if you are talking about unorganized worker migrant uh, labor so um, not migrant actually unorganized workers migrant is not there only in this Okay, un unorganized workers and Ishram portal. What reforms the government is doing with reference to the labor sector? From there, you can use it. Forty-six. With reference to Kushiara River, consider the following statements. Yes, you just have to know this; otherwise, it's very difficult. The Kushiara River is a tributary river in Myanmar and India. Oh, sorry, tribute distributary river. The waters of the Kushiara originate in the state of Nagaland. Okay. Let's look at the map. So this is Bangladesh. So from northeast, the river is flowing, and this is Kushiara mentioned over here. So the Kushiara originates in Nagaland in India, right? So northeast map do I have not? Okay, so yeah, this is northeast. So uh, Arunachal is at the top, and just south of it, but at the extreme east, we have Nagaland. So Kushiara originates from here, and then. waters from other areas join it so pick up tributaries from manipur mizoram and assam right and ultimately it drains into the brahmaputra and bay of bengal kushiara river okay so kushiara river is a distributary river in bangladesh and assam distributary river it is not tributary it is getting distributed it forms on the indo india bangladesh border as a branch of the barak river right so yeah so barak from the barak river koshiara emerges when the barak river separates into koshiara and surma okay surma is not mentioned but you can see it okay. now barak river again you should know barak river flows 900 km to the states of manipur nagaland mizoram and assam and india right so this is the barak river that is flowing a uh, very important actually because this thing was asked in the exam a lot of people had made mistakes prelims about the barak river okay so barak river and it is not a tributary to uh, the brahmaputra river again something that you should keep in mind it's very unrelated this is barak this is brahmaputra there is lot of gap over here ultimately all of them merge that is a different story now if we talking about the barak river we should know about national parks that come around the barak river 
and there is no really uh, national park we but we have a wildlife sanctuary right so we have two actually the new barak assam's barak is all geared to get its second wildlife sanctuary so this sanctuary is there in the news that is the barak buban wildlife sanctuary which will be opened between barak and the sonai river so again one more river is there sonai river and it is famous for all um, all national parks have similar animals species uh, white black backed vulture slender billed vulture right so yeah hornbill is there okay. <coughs> 47 uh, consider the following statements this is with reference to climate change okay net zero what is net net zero is when a country's emissions are compensated by the absorption and removal of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere fine so with the glasgow summit that was there previously uh, glasgow climate change um, the world community world leaders of there was pressure that you know every country should give a timeline as to by when they will be carbon neutral carbon neutral means net zero so that means you always we are always going to burn fossil fuels right fossil fuel em emission is going to take place uh, so how do we compensate for that for example a forestation the more forest obviously we know that forests are carbon sink so that carbon will get stored into trees so what are we doing with reference to compensation of the excess emission that is generated so we have to be carbon neutral if we have to protect from the global warming that is taking place so this is obviously this is correct uh, india gave this goal of punch amrit prime minister modi on such terms you will expect punch amrit so five steps five prompt steps to address net zero india was non committal actually but later suddenly prime minister modi announced that by 2070 will be will be net zero we will achieve net zero So this is the Panchamrit uh, strategy, non-fusal. Uh, I think you can uh, read this, right? So basic point was this only 2070 thing. You should know. Uh, so one is correct, three is wrong. Two. Getting India to net zero report was recently released by Niti Aayog. Normally they release such reports, but this one is wrong. So getting India to net zero report was released in New Delhi. But uh, it is not nothing to do with Niti Aayog. Uh, it was various people, Australia, former Australian uh, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, uh, former UNSC uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary General, International Finance Corporation's head, foreign, uh, former Indian Foreign Secretary. So uh, several stakeholders have contributed as to why, how India can achieve net zero. They have given a strategy in this report, getting India to net zero and why are with other people concerned about it because india is obviously an emerging country developing country uh, we will be uh, um, emitting more so we if we can uh, in this developmental stage if we can transition if we can leapfrog that will be of great help in addressing the issue of climate change right so a is the answer 47 48 seti river recently seen in the news this is the news is it's the river of nepal uh, 49 which of the following crop nutrients is are covered under one nation one fertilizer uh, the three fertilizers actually so one is obviously these two are obviously there urea the uh, urea is for nitrogen um, phosphorus phosphorus is derived from diammonium phosphate and there is potassium Murate of potash, uh, not mentioned over here. Murate of potash. From there we get. I mean, uh, here K is meant K is the sign for potassium, but M O P, right? So these are the three nutrients. So they will be under covered under the one nation one fertilizer scheme. So obviously both are correct. Now let me briefly tell you so the idea is of this one nation one fertilizer that 
the government is giving a lot of subsidies in fertilizers. So they say that uh, now on, whatever, whichever company is making doesn't matter. They will be sold under the brand name of Bharat. Bharat, right? And uh, there will be three, there will be four names. So one is Bharat, NPK, that is the nitrogen. Obviously, it has to be a mixture of these three nutrients, NPK. Then Bharat Urea, Bharat uh, DAP and MOP, right? So different, different nutrients are also covered. So there are basically four fertilizers under the umbrella of this one nation, one fertilizer. They'll be sold under the brand name of Bharat. Question number 50. Uh, recently, India concluded exercise Vajra Prahar. So this is USA, uh, right? India and USA. Rest, uh, we should know about all these exercises. Uh, taking this from Baijus. Okay, right. So all the names are given. You can just uh, read for yourself which all countries are there. You should know about them. All these exercises will automatically be covered in the current affairs system, but you, having them in one place is always beneficial. Next question. Uh, we'll try to do this through logic. With reference to recent developments regarding recognition of prior learning program, consider the following statements. Uh, recognition of prior learning. Okay. It is a component of Pradhan Mantri Shiram Yogi Man Dhan Yojana. Okay. Man Dhan. It's a pension scheme. Pension will ensure Man respect of the labor who retires so for the unorganized labor so do you think it will be a component of pradhan mantri sharam yogi man dhan yojana which is associated with giving pension to the labor force recognition of prior learning doesn't make sense right a recognition of prior learning should be within skill development so there is a scheme known as pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana it is under this uh, recognition of prior learning is a process used to evaluate a person's existing skill sets and knowledge. Okay. So, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, naturally it is to do with skilling. It comes in the Ministry of Skill, Skill Development. Okay. So, skilling. So, one is training labor force into skilling through various ways, apprenticeship, through this skill centers. So, like that, skilling should be there. But there are so many people in our country who, who have the skill. For example, masonry, plumbing. They have the skill, but they don't have a certificate that they are actually skilled. Like I, there is a degree, we all have, most of us have a degree, but they don't have any such sort of a certification or a skill that they are actually trained in something. So recognition of prior learning will evaluate those people and give them the RPL certificates. Fine. So two is correct. One is wrong. Obviously, B is the answer. Artemis mission recently seen in the news is uh, related to which of the following Artemis is with the Greek goddess moon and uh, NASA is launching a series of Artemis missions actually series of missions under the umbrella of Artemis associated with moon <coughs> with Artemis missions. NASA will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon, right? We don't have a woman or a color of color on first color uh, person of well, Neil Armstrong is like but white, uh, right? Racially speaking. Okay. So yeah, so this is the Artemis mission. It's associated with moon rest. You can obviously, if you want to read more, but you'll be spending a lot more time effort to benefit ratio is not there. Yeah, so this basically concludes our session. Uh, so it will be more frequent. Uh, it was a bit unwell, so that's what I got delayed with uploading. So yeah, so see you soon and do practice and please do make that note on the copy pen as I told you in the previous video. So bye bye and all the best.